Um, so we're gonna uh, do our maiden voyage today. I guess so. Yes. You're up for it? I'm up for anything that you're putting me up to, I guess. Okay. Well, what I'll do, I'll step out. Smella, you do the whole run. You you load. I'm going to step on the outside there, and you can watch what Smella's doing, okay. and she'll explain all of... She'll explain the the more technical of the machine, that sort of stuff. I'll stand over here, and anything you don't understand, just ask me. But okay. I'll keep a bit out of the way. So, okay? okay. Yeah. We good? Yeah. Yeah, all right, good. I'm out of the way. All right. Okay. First of all, when you come in here, you want to make sure that your machine is set up. Um, okay. You don't want it on uh, the automatic speed because your flower is just kind of like gonna Ugh, come up. You'll end up wearing it. Yeah, like going. yesterday, like the other day when you were oh, doing yeah, and it was on your face. Yeah, that was You nice. don't want that. So um, I'll start off. Okay. We make the flower mix the day before the ingredients that we're putting in. Okay. okay. Every day I can tell good. you about the ingredients. Okay, definitely. Okay. All right. So what, um, what exactly... What kind of flour is she using? What is she going to be putting in? We do simple flour here. Flour is, the primary flour in everything in the whole building is rice flour. Okay. And it's rice, potato, tapioca, golden flax, the whole seed that we grind up here, and olive oil. And that is the bulk of everything we do. Okay. This here is, Smell is doing rice, potato, tapioca in there, and she's just put the golden flax in there. Okay. Now water. Water is probably the um, trickiest part about the bread. If you put in too much, it's um, it's tough. If not, um, it's, it's not pretty. Well, too much too much water is going to make your bread rise too much, okay. and it's going to be so moist it's going to collapse. Oh, okay. So it over bubbles. Um, okay, you don't want to do that. If you don't do enough water, it's too tight. It can't rise. It's going to be a brick. So getting your water right and smeller does a, a touch. I do visual, which is different. So I look at it and it's the way that the, the dough flops. I got it. Okay, so you said that she uses rice flour? Yeah, yeah. I'll, um, I'll get you back. Oh, okay. Sounds good. Mm. All right. This is what we use. Um, you find it's as common as, like you, you may not have come across it before because you don't eat this way. Yeah. But 50% of the world do not eat wheat, so okay. what do they eat? They eat rice. And this stuff, like, there is a difference in milling. Like, you'll find rice flour here in America and it's milled here, but it's milled in the same mill, um, same style of mill that wheat is. And even if it's not contaminated, in other words, wheat and rice don't go in the same mill, mm -hmm. it's a coarser mill. It's for milling wheat. Wheat doesn't mill the same way as um, rice does. It, um, but to make the super fine that we do, to make the fine fluffy bread and the fine cakes, mm -hmm. we need this sort of rice. And okay. this all comes out of Thailand. They use a different mill. It's a, it's, um, a wet mill. You know, you okay. have a dry mill and a wet mill. And it produces a wet slurry for the rice and then centrifuges on. Okay. So you end up with this super fine. Similar is like Mexico has wet mills and you'll have like corn grits, corn, corn flour mm -hmm. and corn starch, which you reckon is going to be the dry and which is the wet. Yeah. The wet is going to be the corn starch and it's got that, you feel this, it's squeaky. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's a different texture. And all of this stuff pretty much comes out of Thailand. I think okay. that there's other countries that might do it, but I know Thailand and that's where I get it. Everywhere I've been in the world, I can get this stuff. Okay. So this is the deal with this one. Very nice. So that's the red and the green we have too. And the mm -hmm. green we do for pie crust and okay. we use a little bit in our cake flour mix. So that's the two flours. Okay. Same color, same purpose. This one's a little arborio rice and that one's a longer grain. Okay. Okay. Okay, bread is done mixing. All right. We've got to get it out of the bucket. This stuff is super duper sticky. Okay. So wet hands, you have. Wet hands. Water. Yes, wet hands. Like, all the time. You got to wet. Yeah. Oil doesn't do it. You just got to have um, this stuff is sort of a cross between clay and chewing gum. Ugh. And the only way you're going to manage this one is with wet, wet hands. Everything needs to be wet because if you don't, it'll stick to you. Okay. And at easy handling. So we're going to strip it right off now. And um, Smella's going to do buns first and she'll scoop. Now that's got to be done at pace. And she will scoop those buns. Mm -hmm. And then what we're going to do, I'll show you how to do pizzas. 
Okay. And that's scooping too. We'll need two scoops to do a pizza because okay. it's the same dough that does buns, does loaves, does pizzas, does pretzels. It's all exactly the same, but it's how you cook it. You know, the temperature that makes the difference. You bring okay. a different So the process flavor. of cooking is definitely different, but it's all the same. Well, temperature really more than anything because okay. a pretzel is, is um, cooks through crisps all the way and it's like eating um, uh, a crust. You know, like yeah. it's crusted all the way through. Whereas a loaf of bread, for example, is um, crust just on the outside. So there's a difference in that sense. But anyway, we'll get this done. Okay. There you go. There. If you want to do your buns, and we can, we'll wait, and then we can all do pizzas together, and then we'll use the space. Okay. And I'll I'll do runner here, and I'll shift these trays on the rack as smell is finished. All right. And you just do one scoop for those? One scoop for those. Okay, that's easy enough. Yeah. I hope. I was really slow when I first started doing this. Rita would get um, really frustrated with me. It always starts off really tough, you know? Doesn't at all. And now you just put them in the center, does it not really matter? You want to stick it all um, yeah, try to get it even as possible. You want to get the same shape for um, every single bun. Of course, we're doing this handmade, so you're not going to get all the buns will look exactly the same. Okay. Machines will come in the future. And um, yeah, and then we, this is the last tray that we'll do. Okay. Now I see that you're scooping the thing and then you're sliding it, so you want the bottom absolutely right. straight. Right. You okay. It, and you want to keep it neat too. Um, this is a messy thing. Yeah, it Good. looks kind of messy. Mm. I'll do another pizza. Okay. And, and now for the pizza, it's yes. two scoops. Mm. Yeah. I'll do, um, how many you got for you? How many loaves? I've got quite a bit. All right, so if you do me, I'll, I'll do five for a present. Okay, I'll put it five. in. Five. Okay. Now, once smell is... Okay. Also, you want to stick in all the buns into the steamer at the same time. Yeah. So steamer's a big part of why the bread is so soft and so, like, wheat bread, like actual wheat bread. How much you got um, left here? Okay. You're gonna do what are you gonna do? Pizza with those or Yeah, we can do the rest of pizza. Alright then. Okay, we'll get that out of the way. Okay. Now, this is what we're gonna do. Did you ever potter? Have you ever been a potter? No, I haven't. Oh, well, this is going to be very much like pottery. Now, these these are all sprayed. We've got two scoops in here. You need wet okay. hands. Okay, wet hands. All right. Now, you're going to flatten this. And we have our own individual different ways of doing it. What I always focus on, I like this outer edge done first. Okay. See that? And you know, keep it wet. If it's keep sticking it to you, it's too dry. Ah, okay. And see? And it doesn't hurt the amount of water that we use? Does it hurt no. the dough? It doesn't make much difference. Well, I guess you could put, <laughs> you put a bucket of water in here. It's not going to be good. It's not going to be good. Darn but, it. See, and you get that smooth finish. See your fingers right at the edge. And that gives you that lip. Very nice with doing pizzas because it means your cheese is not going to slide off. There you go. You see? Okay. Yeah, a bit more water. Bit more, more water? water. And see here, so you've got lumpy bits at the edge. Uh-huh. Treat it like a potter's wheel and use your hands as an implement. See? Oh. Okay. And then your final thing at the end, you can spin. There you go. All right? Is that good? That's good. Okay, while well, smell is actually scooping this out, let's have a look in the oven and I'll show you what's doing here. Okay. Now, see, that's all right. That's all risen. It's swollen up. It looks really nice. It's risen. Oh, it's risen. Yes. And what's actually happening there is that it's a funny thing with yeast. Yeast, before it dies, does a race to death. And that's okay. what these poor little guys are doing in here. <laughs> They're giving up their lives so that we can eat it. So all of these things have got that really swollen look and they're racing right towards the end. When your oven gets really hot and when they know that they're going to die, they just go. And that's what gives that beautiful, soft, fluffy bun. In their death, they've given us the wonderful buns. Well, by licensing and credentials, I'm a chiropractor, but I have a neurology. So 
people tend to come see us for a variety of conditions and it always comes down to trying to assessing the individual's system and how we can optimize their own system. It's individualized, personalized medicine. I'm actually allergic to wheat, protein, gluten. And Rita's restaurant, Little Aussie Bakery and Cafe, is, is right on the progressive line of gluten-free cooking. And this is gonna be the way to go for a lot of people. So she's, she's way ahead of the game. And she's an expert at creating something that's gluten-free, yet making it absolutely uh, tasty and enjoyable. It doesn't have the, it, it doesn't feel like you're missing or being anything or being deprived of anything. It's actually, it's real food. It's all made with real stuff. It's just not wheat flour. It's the protein component of wheat that triggers immune responses in many people. So for me, in my individual system, it creates a, an autoimmune condition that resembles lupus. So my joints hurt, I get a rash on my face, and, and just feel pretty bad uh, for several days after eating, say, a pizza or drinking a beer. Um, as long as I stay away from wheat most of the time, I'm extremely healthy, feel great. And I see that in my patient population, too. Uh, we see a lot of people that may or may not be wheat intolerant or allergic or gluten intolerant. Doesn't matter, the ones that are definitely gluten intolerant uh, and they do the avoidance, well, they, they do very well. And those individuals that aren't necessarily allergic, they do better too because the gluten tends to create inflammatory conditions that might be precluding a healing response that, that we're trying to get. Okay, Smilla, okay. we're gonna do shook pastry again today. We've got right. a couple of orders here. We've got yes. a couple of dairy-free. So this one, we're gonna do no butter. We're gonna do vegetable shortening. Right. Okay? Yes. All right, we got, I've boiled and melted this lot. Let's... Which is the vegetable oil and water. Yeah. Reduced, right? All right. And that Slow. is our house flour? And salt. And salt, okay. Okay, slow, steady stream. Okay. Now this... This is the uh, the fun part. This is the queen this is of pastry. Right. <laughs> this is as good as it gets. This is this is sex on a stick. Sex, sex on a stick. stick. It is sex <laughs> on a stick. My favorite pastry. Okay. Now this one is not a sweet pastry. There's no sugar added to this. This one can be a wonderful savory as much as it is a damn fine eclair. Okay. Or a Saint Honours, in fact. Okay. All right. Sixteen eggs into this baby. Six one. Now it's the trick is is to keep this one spinning and to get that pastry smooth. Okay. It's going to crumble initially and it looks like it hasn't come together. Right, and then it all just sucks back into itself. And... It does. Okay. Turn, turns to silk. This is probably your favourite pastry, isn't it? It is. I love this one to death. I really do. And I think it was the last pastry that I learned. Oh, no. The, um, the biscuits. Biscuits. Biscuit. I yeah. like biscuits. Which is hard for an Australian to do an American biscuit. Yeah, which is, which is, uh, well, I don't know. Biscuit is neither, neither a Danish pastry and it's not a scone. It's somewhere in between. Is there any baking powder in this or is it going to rise all on its own? All on its own. Hey, are we on 500? Yes, it's very hot. Now, see how we're coming together now? Yeah. It's really like one big lump of chewing yeah. gum. Now, if I left it at that, it'd be too stiff. So okay. we're just going to give it a little more. I think it'll take the full 16. Sometimes it doesn't take your full 16. You know, it just doesn't. And other times it will. But the more eggs, the better. Yeah, but you don't want to get sloppy. Okay. All right.
Okay, we are done. All See? Right. Yeah. It's really nice and stiff. It is gorgeous. Okay. Now, I did once try to see if I could do this by hand. And this is the same stuff that you could handle this, in theory, with wet hands. I mean, I tried to, to see if I could do it via hand and not pipe it. And, of course, save some mess. That's a nice thought. But um, okay. I think I made more mess. And it helps to spray the bag, right? So that just yeah. comes We off spray the bag. That helps. Okay. I'll leave this other half in here. It's too hard to handle. Okay. Okay, babe. Pass and them up. Give me okay. the pans one at a time. Now this this cake that we that we're gonna do here, well we're doing the framework of this cake and it's called Saint Anours. Excuse the accent. <laughs> and we're doing layers so what it is is producing this pancake form that's going to rise graciously a lot to be said for looking good you see you can show off and say i made look this at this. Yeah, look at this. this next this doesn't need to be sprayed with vegetable oil or anything no, no, right no. okay no 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 this has got so much eggs in it it's going to be glossy but it is essentially dairy free Right? Dairy no free. Sugar. Well, I mean, I think traditionally shoe pastry, well, not, not I do think, in fact, shoe pastry traditionally is a butter. And the trick about using butter is that you eliminate so many people that are dairy free. Right. And you've got to be a whole heap more careful if you're using butter because butter burns. Whereas if I use vegetable shortening and I use just the palm butter one, I can get the temperatures I want and I don't have any issues about burning. I don't have any allergy issues because I don't know anyone that's got an issue with palm butter. The mixed vegetable shortenings are usually got soy oil in it. And you have a lot of people with soy oil. I mean, I don't do well with soy, so. I remember you did it with butter once, but um, yeah. it didn't hold its shape. It didn't get as big as no. it did with just palm oil. Well, palm oil can, it's stiff. It's heat. And the palm oil can take the heat. And to, to, to cook this sort of stuff, you're sitting on 500. And uh, butter doesn't like 500 degrees. And uh, so you've got to be more careful about it. And, um, and the taste of butter is, is, is lovely, but I mean, it, I, I we've got so many butter. eggs here that, that the taste of eggs really is the dominant thing and it's, it's a wonderful taste anyway. So. I don't know how much we're going to have left over for the eclairs. We should, we should we be able to get a few eclairs. I mean, I was a little biased against uh, the palm oil because I, I think just butter, butter tastes good. I like butter, but um, it actually tastes very good. Oh, uh, to me, it's just, it's a beautiful pastry. And the one, I remember having some wonderful stuff for the first time and it was back home and what was it it was chicken avocado and a cream sauce and the cream puff version of this was made and they'd fill it with that or they'd do a seafood ve version not much use for you right being vegan or vegetarian I'm not vegan. oh well vegetarian same difference not diverse enough, I tell you. I oh, can't be teaching you how to cook meat. What's Thanks the point? Thanks a lot. That's okay. I'll just stick to cakes. There you go. And this needs, and this is going all the okay. way to the back, right? Right to the back. Okay. Okay. All right. Now this one is just real simple. There you go. You get to do the next okay. one. And it's every Give other. me a gap. Yeah, give me gaps because you want that heat to really get around that. And don't go to the full end. Stack them gonna... so that it's going to spread out anyway. And Another one? Yeah, that's good. Is that good? Next one. There you so go. there's no problem about letting this rise, right? Because there's no. no baking powder in it. And it's... No, because what happens, you hit it with so much temperature that it's the steam within it that rises it and it's the egg that holds the outer form. And they're just, to me, they're the most dramatic things. Besides bread, they're just beautiful, dramatic things to watch make. Which it's weird because I every once in a while when I do get around to doing like a, a cookbook, I always read that it's always very like a moderate temperatures that they use. And I think we're like like the only place that ever uses anything above like 350. And I just don't get it because we've tried using um, low temperature as and like nothing for the bread. That big. Yeah, for the bread, oh, no, for, for bread, this, for, for nothing. For bread, to get done. that nice. Here, give us just a cream puff. 
For, for bread to get that lovely bread crusty taste, you, you've really got to hit it with 500 degrees. I mean, That's all 350 I got. is cake. All right, let's let's stack this baby. Saint the Norris, queen, the queen of the all cakes. Queen of cakes. Okay. Now this little baby, I'm going to crush a little bit because okay. we're just a little bit too high. And so if you if chocolate? you do the chocolate, I'll do the cream. Alrighty, go. So I, I can I can do as much chocolate as I want, right? Well, let's not get too silly. But I don't like that much chocolate. Then you're weird. <laughs> you're really weird. Good. Okay. Good chocolate. And fresh cream, fresh whipped cream. Did you vanilla this one? Yes, or what? I did. Vanilla, so vanilla and whipped Philly. cream. Vanilla, yes, it's excellent. Yeah, I think that one's a good one for number two. This okay. is a, actually a very simple cake, except for the pastry. Well, yeah. Get a little over the edges too. Okay. So we do. Um, if we, I mean, you know, if we're going to do decadence. Let's go all the way. probably could. What do you reckon, a fourth layer or a third layer? It would be very dramatic if we did four. Yeah. This is nice. This is a nice height. Yeah, it's a nice, nice height. Okay. Chocolate? Yep. There we go. Beautiful. Okay. All right. Now, fruit. Yes, these they're gorgeous. So, the lens is on steroids. <laughs> they're huge. <laughs> Beautiful. I prefer strawberries. Mm. And with the blueberries, you know, I always like them when they're little, um, you know, that little sucker is pointing mm -hmm. this way. And let's do, yeah, you can do the strawberries. Thank you. I love and it when they have a stem on it and it looks gorgeous. Well, I think so. Makes it look so real, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Reading. Yeah. I like it. As in toss. What do you mean casual? Toss. I mean, this is deliberately placed. We it did this with <laughs> great, I mean, that was precision. Grace. You see that Grace. We... Grace. Yeah. Alrighty, so now maybe a little bit something here, you know, to balance it out. Maybe a little some... powdered sugar. I think that might finish it, but give me a little bit of fruit there as well. And you know, I think this just really finishes it off. I mean, a cake to look gorgeous. There we go. Now, if you are going to get sick and you are going <laughs> to eat something, then what do you know? Ain't not a scrap of wheat in there. Nope. All right, well, let's quickly do just a couple of um, the eclairs. Do you want to fill or I'll fill? I'll fill, because right, I like then. poking a little hole. All right, you do that. What you do with the chocolate? Chocolate's right here. It's just enough cream to plump it up, right? Yeah, but you've got to keep your oh, thumb on that there. Good girl. All right, that'll do. <laughs> Thanks, boss. Yeah, Thanks, boss. All right. And you know what? I think we need to top these little suckers off with something that makes it seriously worthwhile. We just uh, stuff these little devils. This is really messy, Rita. Is it messy? This is really messy. Okay. Well, you have to clean another bag. Yeah, if you're going to switch it to another bag, bag, you're going to have to clean the bag. All right. Oh, I'm not cleaning this. It's messy, really, isn't it, smell? Yeah. It's so worth it, though. <laughs> How long have we been cleaning messes together? Uh, too long. Yeah. Um, a year and a half almost. Year and a half. A year and a half almost. It's one hell of a marriage, really, it's been, isn't it? Ben, you're my BFF. <laughs> <laughs> you're my best friend. Forever. There you go. Yeah. There you go. We Kay. produce good pastry Tasty. together. It's then been fun. we stuff our faces with them. I think we should. Sure. <laughs> this is um, Rita. This is to to you, babe. I love you, Rita. I love you too. And I love your <laughs> eclairs. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, g'day, Jose. How Hi, are you? How are you? I'm good. How are you? Oh, marvellous. What can I do for you? I need some cake. You look like you need some cake. I need a sugar rush here. Right, so and I have just the cake for you, mate. W which just one? Just the cake for you. What's this beautiful creation right here? That is our Saint and Oars, mate. Tell you some stories. Okay. What were you interested in? Uh, this one, right? Is that gluten-free? <laughs> <laughs> of course it's gluten-free, Jose. You don't need to ask that. Well, but that's our cake of the month this month. That's um, our... Saint Honor cake, and it's a, basically a chocolate eclair, eclair cake, very, very decadent, full of cream, all that sort of stuff. Absolutely delicious. You'll love it. Sold. It's got your name on it. All right. 
Okay. Okay. Beef pies. Beef pies it beef. is, baby. Beef pies. Beef pies are uh, really popular in Australia, <laughs> aren't they? They're like the thing. <laughs> they are the you thing. You eat beef. <laughs> And uh, you put ketchup on it. Yeah. Very do. sophisticated. And you know what? When I came yeah. here and we put, um, we put, um, I'm just loading all of this up ready. Uh, when we put beef pies first on the menu and people would say, so what's in the pie? Do they not get it? Obviously not. This is beef. And I said meat. And they said beef, meat. And they said, ah, oh, nothing else? I said, no, that's why they're beef pies. That's mm. pretty <laughs> cryptic, really. Isn't it? But anyway, so now we do beef pies because we've educated. And now they're really popular, actually. Yeah. They are. They are. So. And that is the sweet flour, right? Yep. Okay. I'm going to do this one. We'll get that base and we'll do those ones. Okay. The pie dough does have dairy in it, though. Yeah, it does. I mean, you can do. And eggs, right? Yeah. So. You can do a pie dough without dairy, like in other words, no butter, and you can do it. Saying you can do it without eggs and you can do it without dairy. This one I prefer, you know, this pie crust. I really do prefer with with butter. And um, like I said, you know, this is very old fashioned. You know that I don't know anyone that uh, actually does their own pies. You implying this is 1950s or what? Yes, oh, you, you are old fashioned. I'm Oh, there you go. But, but you you're hot for your eating. <laughs> so it's okay. I like that. I like that. I don't, I don't remember my grandmother making pies. She made um, almond cakes, but I do remember mum making this, and that was the first bit of playing around with dough, and that's where I learned to roll. It's weird, isn't it? It's very weird. Phil, baby, Phil. Okay. Okay, while you're doing that, I'm going to do the lid. And what's, what is this meat? It's flesh. I know it's, I know it's meat. <laughs> But I know you're very specific about yeah. the, the meat that it's you use. It's osabuco, which is meat that's cut from the leg of the cow, but it's cut straight through the bone, so you include the marrow. And there is a little bit of uh, ground beef in there as well. And it's a texture thing. So we've got also, and that was slowly cooked over about three hours, a lot of garlic in there, bay leaf. I see um, some tomatoes. Some tomatoes, some jalapenos in there, because, I mean, we are south. It's real like spicy. <laughs> And I'm pouring over like a, a vegetable soup, soup. broth. Yeah. Because it needs it needs moisture, right? Yeah. Nice well, it forms dry. a gravy, and and a gravy is a nice thing. I mean, a dry pie. Yeah, it's not a lot into that. Yeah. The Philistines, from where I come from, husband being one of them, <laughs> uh, then makes a mess of my best pie and goes and slops tomato sauce all over it. I mean, what? What's that all about? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. how long have I been educating him know. and he didn't get it after all of those years? So at home I was a whole heap more brutal. You put tomato sauce on that, I'm not cooking another right. pie. And that, I was don't a, that was a good deal. That was a good deal. Alrighty. You want a water? And I'll, yes. and I'll whack this on. Because pie dough doesn't stick without water. It does not. One of the first things I learned here. So simple. Alright. Now. Holding your ears. Mm. And now I remember when I first started working here, I was actually, pie dough was one of the first things. Yeah, it was. Fondest memory ever, um, Thanksgiving night. Um, first time doing pie dough. I think it was like nine o'clock. We had been here since like seven. Yeah, and, it was uh, a brutal day. It was a horrible day. <laughs> it was a horrible day. And I'm over here making my pie dough, just staring at a wall, I think. And uh, Rita comes up to me and she's just like, hey, Smeller, you're doing that completely wrong. Okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll make another batch, Rita. Okay, smell it, we're out of butter. We're out of butter. And so I pretty much messed up two batches of pie oh, dough. That was a killer. We had to go shopping for butter, and we were here till about 10 o'clock on Thanksgiving. But, but I did make fruit mince pies. Yes, we did, and that we got me those. through the day. That was good. With the precious pie dough that we made three times. All right, now it's just a simple pinch. Okay, I'll we're going to spray the top. I'll just shove that around a little bit. For and never never forget your air holes. If you don't put your air holes, it's going to lift up the sides and it's going to be a talking pie. Right. All right. This sucker is good to be baked. Thank you. Now, give that a bit of care and try this. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> 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 
Which one? <laughs> That's blank. That's tall. <laughs> <laughs> Probably nine or six on the street. <laughs> <laughs>